So now the basic aim of fixation we now know now how to achieve fixation how to how to fix a cell this is the basic you know question again how to fix a cell how we can kill a cell without actually destroying its structure that is the very basic you know concept now listen uh, in electron microscope you know in electron microscope there are in electron microscope the chemicals we use for fixation is known as electron microscope fixative okay any fixative is a chemical which fixes the cell now listen the fixatives which we use in electron microscope are known as electron microscope fixative now listen with all your attention electron microscope fixatives okay are basically of three types are basically of three types now listen electron microscope fixatives are basically of three types okay now you should again understand one thing that we will be discussing the most common one at last why because the most commonly used fixative was actually discovered in the late you know 1970s but the most we will discuss at first the most early one our most early fixative used in electron microscopy then it's you know more, um, updated version then we'll talk about the most common because most common is actually the most you know new one okay now listen the most uh, you know primitive fixative which we use in our electron microscope is called osmium tetroxide osmium osmium tetroxide it has a molecular formula of oso4 it is a molecular formula of oso4 now listen with all your attention listen many people to nowadays you know fix tissues and all when they they are using electron microscope i have a friend okay now when i told him that which fixative you use he said he doesn't know anything about the fixative anything about anything what he knows is what he knows he is he actually does something called stab preparation he doesn't know stab involves both fixation okay <laughs> and you know staining the cell stab is actually a dual method okay now listen many people doesn't know while doing the electron microscopy process that they what they are actually doing that's a very basic thing you need to understand today that listen suppose you are a very unfortunate student and you are born in 1950s okay then you will have to use this osmium tetroxide then we'll have to use osmium tetroxide why listen what is the importance of osmium tetroxide the importance of osmium tetroxide is listen you know this is a cell right now listen this is cell membrane right this is a cell membrane okay now suppose if this is a cell membrane okay if this is a cell membrane you should understand what is osmium tetroxide doing is actually osmium tetroxide is binding with the phospholipid bilayer of this you know lipid bilayer phospholipid of this lipid bilayer osmium tetroxide is actually binding with this phospholipid bilayer okay now listen suppose this is your phospholipid bilayer suppose this is your phospholipid bilayer suppose this is your phospholipid bilayer okay now you should understand that osmium tetroxide actually binds with this phospholipid bilayer okay now what happens because of the binding of osmium tetroxide osmium is a very heavy metal osmium is a very heavy metal you should understand one thing osmium is a very heavy metal okay now due to the binding of this heavy metal what happens is now this whole you know structure this whole phospholipid now is now what strengthened and it can't move now that means by the addition of osmium tetroxide the whole fluidity and all, everything is lost now listen osmium tetroxide does another thing that is it binds with 
binds with proteins binds with proteins in the cell binds with proteins in, in the cell and thus suppose this is a protein okay suppose this is a protein and it is in its native structure now listen native means original structure okay that means suppose this is a protein and osmium tetroxide now binds here that means whatever you do now this protein will not change any this protein now will not be changed by any conformational you know mm, now this protein will actually not allow any conformational change inside it that means this protein can no longer change its shape that means it is now fixed so osmium tetroxide does two things it binds with phospholipid and it binds with a protein inside it okay so these are the two advantages when we are talking about suppose you are a very unfortunate person and you don't know the hazards of osmium tetroxide you know, and you want to talk about the advantages there are basically two advantages first it binds with you know lipid phospholipid binding and second is what it binds with protein and the tissue is fixed okay this, these are the basic two things now if we talk about disadvantages now listen with all your attention if we talk about the disadvantages of osmium tetroxide there are many if we talk about uh, if we talk about disadvantages of osmium tetroxide there are many disadvantages what are the very basic disadvantages there are many disadvantages of osmium tetroxide number 1 number 1 you should understand it is highly toxic for humans it is highly toxic for humans it is highly toxic for humans number 2 very important point to understand it is highly expensive for human lab you know highly expensive for labs what do you mean by human labs i don't know <laughs> human can only run lab <laughs> okay now the third point is very important point to understand why you know listen with all your attention listen we are humans right when we are entering a lab we know that we will have to deal every day with some chemicals which are hazardous to our health <laughs> every scientist know that so these two points won't bother much right we are not bothered about these two points but we are more bothered about th th third points listen in the exam okay they will be asked you, you about they will be asking you about the disadvantages of osmium tetroxide because these two are the most common answers but third point is the most unique answer and you should always understand listen suppose you are a, you are on the verge of getting a nobel prize and you have been told that you will have to use osmium tetroxide but using this may lead to toxicity in your body and it is it is you know highly you know it is not a inflation adjusted you know price so the price may go up and down so what you will do you will obviously work with osmium tetroxide because you need a nobel prize now listen with all your attention so these two points are good for small labs but whenever it comes to bigger labs more you know accurate labs or you know more you know what 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 i should say you know more important labs then they will ignore these two points but they cannot ignore the third point that's why the second generation you know fixative came the third point is osmium tetroxide is actually having osmium which is a heavy metal and that's why it cannot penetrate the cell membrane that's why they can easily fix the you know what they can easily fix the phospholipid bilayer obviously but they as they cannot penetrate very efficiently into the pro, into the cytoplasm they cannot fix the protein and listen with all your attention if you cannot fix a protein inside the cytoplasm then that tissue is not at all fixed properly fixation of proteins inside cytoplasm represents proper fixation so osmium tetroxide why it is not a good you know fixative agent for electronic because because of oh sorry poor penetration right poor penetration into the cells okay into the cells so these are the very basic point 
you should understand so this is the most important point you should understand when you are talking about osmium tetroxide as a electron microscope fixative okay now do you think these two points are very much essential for second generation second generation fixative do you think no the most important point is the third one we should have now listen with all your attention we should have now a fixative which can easily penetrate the cells and it has got good efficiency that means it can bind to all the proteins in the world right because suppose you are a fixative when you enter the cell and you only you know fix or you only bind to a specific class of protein that means what you are a poor fixative why because all other proteins are there if you kill the cell right now then what will happen those proteins will be you know dead suppose you are a protein suppose you are a protein suppose you are a fixative when you bind to a particular protein that is protein kinase only then what will happen you know listen suppose now you add acid what will happen that means protein kinase will be in you know intact in the cell but what will happen you know actin myosin which are actually cytoskeletal proteins they will be destroyed they will be destroyed that means the cyto architecture or the architecture of the cell will be disrupted that means what is the, what is the definition of a good fixative a good fixative binds with almost every protein in the world now how this is achieved second generation you know what fixative has achieved that how listen the second generation the second generation fixative electron microscopy fixative is known by the name of glutaraldehyde glutaraldehyde it is known by the name of glutaraldehyde okay what is the you know formula for glutaraldehyde i will the carbon skeleton formula this is the formulation of glutaraldehyde this is the formulation of glutaraldehyde 